Okay, so you may be asking yourself who this guy is and why you should listen to me. Um, I've been developing for over 10 years. In previous lives, I did uh, a lot of Java, a lot of web and, and JavaScript. I moved to .NET about, uh, I guess it would be about seven years ago. And then um, about five-ish years ago, I really kind of made a push to, to learn um, iOS and, and really get into that. And I've been developing for iOS. And which includes Xamarin iOS, which is you know pretty much iOS, but with C sharp. <coughs> I did that for a couple of years, but for pretty much the last five years, I've been I've been doing iOS development. A um, little bit about me: I, I'm from here. I lived in Atlanta for eight years, and just this last year, my, my family and I we moved back to Omaha, and I've been working with Travel and Transport as iOS developer for about just over a year. So, I guess. That gives credence to what I'm going to say. I don't know. So, a um, lot to cover with with the Apple Watch. So, what I'm going to cover is more first the interaction model, um, what the different uh, ha how it works with the UI. Um, there's different concepts for because this is a watch. It's a it's a wearable device. I'll talk about architecture. Um, this includes like watch kit. One and watch get two, um, and I'll go over some of the APIs and what's possible. Try to do some live coding demos, sort of things. We'll see how that works, um, and then uh, finish off with design considerations because it is a very, very different um, beast to design for and to know um, what what works, what doesn't, and we're pretty much think of it as like uh, with design, we're we're almost like back. To to when, when um, mobile with iOS and Android first came out. It's like what worked, what didn't, and people were really kind of throwing a lot of stuff against the wall. Some was working, some wasn't, and we're really kind of in that same sort of Wild West sort of thing with, with the watch. But it's a lot more, um, uh, well, I'll just talk more about that later. So. <laughs> so first off, what is this thing? Um, it is a computer, obviously, uh, but it's on your wrist. Um, <coughs> so was, I was really interested when they announced it. It's like, okay, what actually is this thing? Um, how powerful is it? How, what things you, can you do with it eventually? And uh, when they announced it, or when they uh, came out with WatchKit 2, um, there was some uh, uh, baselines or some uh, some testing that people did, and it was about the processor was about as powerful as like a, an iPhone 4S. It's got half gig of memory. It's got all the communication, um, uh, everything that you would require for a computer com to communicate, networking, Bluetooth, and everything else. But, but more importantly, when you're thinking about it, it's it's just a watch. It's like you, you got you know, it's a, it's a computer, but. It's it's just a watch essentially at, in, in its core, so you can think of all these grand things, but you really need to kind of uh, focus it through the lens of that that it's a watch. Um, it's it's really great for convenient interaction. Um, my wife has one of these, and we use it a lot for for messaging and and whatnot. It's got some nice features for for doing that and. It makes it a lot more of a, of a personal device, which I think is, is really cool. But for me, when, when I was thinking about it, um, the, this activity tracker was one of the like, most important things for me. Since uh, I was wearing a, a Nike Fuel Band for a while beforehand, and I really liked the activity tracking. People love their Fitbits and everything else. And, and I just wanted something, first off, to, to replace my, my Fuel Band. and just be you know a better tracker um, and I don't know about you but like I wasn't a watch wearer for forever I think it was almost kind of like people stopped wearing watches when uh, people were had phones in their pockets all the time that uh, me included like I wore a watch growing up constantly had a phone in my pocket constantly and I'm not gonna eat, like why do I need this thing on my wrist all the time and only this one thing so <laughs> anyway um, that's just 
I'm trying to give just a general overview of what the watch is, and then we'll kind of dive in. So you want to develop an app. What does it take? Um, so it's the same requirements as iOS. You have to have a Mac. You have to have Xcode. And it is highly recommended they actually have the device um, to use, to, to test on, to run your apps. Because I think especially with, with the case with the, the watch, the simulator does not cut it. It's very, it, it's OK. And if you want to do some quick stuff, but you, you really, really, really have to have a watch in order to really you know, understand it and develop apps that are well. So <coughs> I'll, I'll mention with, with Xcode 7 and iOS 9 that they released this year, you can now develop, you can, you can create an account um, and download Xcode. And Apple now allows you to run your code on one device without all, you know, free before you had to pay $99 per year in order to even run it on your device. So now they've opened up just a little bit. So if you have uh, a watch, you can download it, um, run it. If you have a Mac, obviously, you can, you can run it on your personal one personal device. And then with that $99, it opens up to like uh, 1,000 devices per, per year. And, and then in order to publish it to the App Store, you, you obviously have to, have to pay the, the tax on that. So. All right, <coughs> so I'm going to be, with this, I think I'm just going to flip back and forth and talk about the different um, interface concepts with the actual watch, because you can talk about it, but I think really kind of seeing it really kind of helps things. Um, so the first thing is, is glances. Let's see if we can get this. All right. You're on one, right? Yeah. All right. So, so here's the the main thing is is the watch face. Um, I'll quickly just kind of demo some stuff. You can you can change your watch face. It, it's this is what you see when you look at your watch. It, it automatically turns on when when you uh, when you uh, when you are looking at it. Um, but you swipe from the bottom to get uh, what are called glances. And these are it's just these list of pages you can configure that will show you pretty much uh, a list of data that you would need at the time. So each watch app can include one glance. And then um, you can configure it to show up in this list. So here's the calendar. And hey, I'm right here. This is where basically, if you're, if you want to see what your calendar is, you could just swipe up like the glance every once in a while. But I'm sorry, what is a glance? this is what a glance is. Think of it. I guess the best way to think of it is like an Android widget. Android, I think from the beginning, has had a widget that you can put on the home screen, and it just has displays some data that you want. Um, widgets a little bit more uh, interactive since you can. They're kind of like little apps, but a glance is essentially one screen into your app, and you can you can see in. Are you restricted to just like a it's just a dialogue that only gives the data for that? Or? Yeah, I'll kind of get into more what 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 are the restrictions? What do the what do they do? Um, so you, you, if you're following a stock, so you can do it. Glance, or is this a yeah, yeah. So you see at the bottom right down there, there's these pages. So you, is these little dots then then will show you which uh, which one you're yeah so one one screen per app and you can you configure this in the 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 watch um, the iOS the iPhone watch app you can just basically select which ones I think it's 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 nice but this whole swiping between ones all these just gets kind of mm -hmm. cumbersome to me I really thought that they would kind of fix this with, with two. I think with three, they'll make it. So like you could have like 12 glances and then quickly quickly go to one. It's it really Yeah, if you've got, that's the thing. You don't want to have like, a, you know, I think you can only ma have max of like maybe 
12 or 15, but you know, they're, it's, it's really nice, but because I think they're really important because to me, it's kind of your primary launching point into your app. So on any of these, this is the only interaction you have. You get your data and you, you, you click on it and it goes directly into your app. So they're really important and I think is one of the things that when, if you're going to develop a, a watch app, you need to seriously consider what, that, what that's going to be. Because, it's like a yeah, a yeah, it's kind of like a splash screen. It's kind of like um, just a, just a little bit. So with with Watch Two, they uh, they expanded this idea a bit more. I'll get to that. It's called, um, but so we'll go into apps. So you you click the digital crown. That's what this little thing is on the side, and you get to the screen with all with, with all the apps. <coughs> By default, if you download an app, I think it'll automatically just install it. So if you don't pay attention to this stuff, you'll get you know a bajillion of these things showing up. And this interface, I think, is is kind of unwieldy because you, I almost never use this for for launching stuff. Very once in a while, every every very so often. But I think I really wish there was a way to just kind of like with with iPhone, you could have. Um, a screen with just three apps that you always use or something like that and go to the next and go to the next but because this big huge collection you can arrange this but but still it's like this big huge blob that can, can overwhelm you <coughs> all right so so the apps themselves um, we'll be going into a lot more detail but let's see here we'll go into Oh, I guess like photos or stocks, sure. So you click it, it launches the app, and there's <coughs> there's e each app needs to be very um, focused on on the UI that it gives you. There's Apple can, Apple talks in nause ad nauseum about um, focusing on what you present to the user. There's no menus. There's no whatever. Um, you just show what, what the user probably will need at the time because when you're thinking about it, you're only going to be using this thing for seconds at a time. You don't want to have your, your wrist up and using it constantly. We'll talk you know, a lot more about apps later, obviously, but notifications are the, the next big thing. You can't really demo it since I don't have to have a notification coming in, but so basically how it works is every no every notification that you get to your watch will first show up on your every notification you get to your phone will show up first on your watch if your wa phone is locked. So every text message and and um, if you drilled down and wheedled down how many notifications you get from your your phone, you won't get any. Like when, when I started using it, I turned off not notifications on a lot of apps. Then I found like, well, this is a lot more convenient to me to, because uh, my, my phone buzzing in my pocket is really annoying, but my watch kind of pinging at me just for, for stuff that I'm, I'm actually interested in, like messages and, you know, uh, I shouldn't touch that, um, news and stuff like that. So basically, I'll get into this a little bit more, but there's three sorts of concepts. You have uh, a quick glance, which means that's what shows up when the, the notification comes in. There's like a, just a little, little bit of data that you see. And say like, you then can make a decision, all right, do I actually want to see this? Y it pops up, and then you have more or less what's called a long look notification, and then that goes away. It's, sorry, it's hard to can't really demo it, <coughs> but then you can then act on it or just ignore it. All right, so the last thing is complications. So on each of the watch faces, or not on, on all of them, but on some of the watch faces, you have these little bits of area that apps can now present data to. I actually should set this to go to sleep. But so when you press down onto it, you can customize it and kind of see 
these different areas. So th all these are, are what's called complications. Think of them as like mini glances. And they're really great because they're always updated. They're always relevant to uh, the time that you're looking at. And I think it's, they're, they're much more useful than, than I think the glances. So in the same sort of vein with the glances, really seriously consider if a, if, if a complication would work for you because it also, in the same way, it provides a, a launching point into your app. And this is only on the 2.0. So I'll try to make the distinction between 1.0 and 2.0, but this is one of the new things, so. All right. I think I've talked about that enough. Any questions? Feel free to stop. Yes? I have a question. Uh, yeah. How, so you, do you not get any notifications that the launch app is installed? You don't know, right? No, you will. I mean, like, if, if like, you know, you have an app that gets, that, like, that sends you notifications, you'll get the notification on your watch as just, like, a generic notification, same, same sort of text that you would see on your phone. That, that, not the watch app. Are you talking about the watch app or the iPhone app? Uh, the watch app. How do you know, how do you know uh, an app has a watch app? Okay. Oh, so it'll, it'll install automatically. I think by, de by default you'll see it on the home screen. Um, but that's like a lot of things in there. So how do you discover that you have a watch app? You, uh, you'll see it when you download it. It'll say like, you know, there in includes a watch app. On the app, on the store link, and then in the 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 Apple Watch app on the iPhone, you'll have a list of all the apps, and you can configure them to show either a glance or install on it or allow notifications. There's lots of things you can tweak in, in there. Is there an Apple Watch store like uh, like a filter or something? That you can yeah, yeah, okay, cool. yeah. Actually, I can probably I just use this. A spot where you can search for that. I didn't know if it was. So this is the app that includes all the other apps, and this is what you use to configure pretty much everything. Um, there's an explore link down here, and then uh, no wait, the featured. This is kind of like uh, the store within the store. So this will show you all uh, all apps that actually have watch apps, and then you can install them from here. Think of it like a, a mini app store. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Is that like this is just uh, watch apps that are? Sorry to steal your time, but no. this is all apps that are like picked by Apple to say they're really good, though, right? This this is the Dash app still up in here. This is the categories at the top. Yeah, you can you can drill down. These are like featured, and then you can oh, okay. Okay. so okay. travel and whatnot. But then you can search for apps like Dash, and eventually it might show up, but or not. Yep, there it is. So okay. Don't fall over. All right, so let's talk about the, so glances, I think I went over all this, oh, wrong one. It's so basically, bottom line glances are single interface. There's no interaction, you can't have any buttons or anything. Apple's built-in glances are not like this. <laughs> I'll point out you can like you can adjust the volume on on the glance for um, uh, the music, or there's another glance to turn off, you know, toggle things like notifications and put in silent mode and stuff like that. And then they're upgraded. They're updated frequently, so they've got to be fast. So, as users are swiping through all these different glances, they're all updated. All of them essentially are firing off a process on your phone that go that uh, gets data. So um, I found this out because, like, 
when we launched our app, I saw lots of hits with our analytics with the glances. It's because not everyone's just sitting there looking at the glance. It gets fired off every single time they open up the glance and, 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 and swipe through. So, OK. So let's talk about the architecture. So in the beginning with Watch OS 1, which was earlier this year, um, they had Watch 1 was kind of an intermediate for stepping to Watch 2. And um, I almost think that Apple shouldn't have just gone to 2, but I, more that I was thinking about it, I, I, I really think it's great that they did 1 because it allowed all these people with all this code and all these um, apps that are already out there to be able to leverage um, a lot of everything that you have and, and make um, uh, an app. The downside is that it, the performance and the features aren't great. It's, it's, it's almost like a, it's a good enough solution, but basically how it works, um, every app includes um, a separate watch app. And this watch app, essentially, all it is is your interface ele elements, your images, all your resources. So that's with one is the one the only thing that actually gets installed on your watch. There's no code, there's no executable or anything. It's essentially a package of a storyboard. If you're familiar, if you're familiar with iOS. So what in, what happens with one is there's an extension. <coughs> I, sh I was I was thinking about this. I should have had a separate so slide for extensions, but. Basically, extensions are a, a separate executable package that um, lives alongside your app. It gets, in, it gets installed with your app, but it runs in its own sandbox. Um, it has its own separate restrictions. And um, iOS will fire up this watch ex extension, fire, um, essentially do these specific calls of what the actual action that the user is doing, and then return the data back to the watch to display on the app. So all that changed with two when they released this, this uh, of last month, I guess. So they announced it in June. But basically, the, the main difference is there's still an extension. This was the, the biggest surprise to me. I figured it would be more like an iPhone app, where you just have your app. Um, but they created this. There's still this separation of the watch app and the extension. And the difference is the extension is, watch, is, is running on the watch instead of on the phone. So there's still some communication between the watch and the phone, but it's, um, it, it's different. So we'll see. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So this kind of expands on the no notification stuff I, I was explaining before. This is what you see when um, a notification first comes in. You see this big icon so you can identify, OK, where's this from? Do I care about this? Is this something I care about? A um, little uh, a title. And then if you hold your wrist up, it slides up and you get um, uh, an expanded notification. So. How are we doing on time? OK, so notifications um, are really important because you can then customize what the user sees. Um, you can design the actual interface if you have a graphic that uh, you then create um, to that would ex better explain to the user what's going on. You can include that. You can run code to, to do certain actions when they come in. but. So basically, uh, I'll, I'll skip over that. I think you got it. OK. So let's talk about life cycle, what's going on when um, you launch an app. So essentially, the interface controller, this is the storyboard. This gets loaded on the watch. And then this life cycle goes through of. Uh, 
initializing, waking, activating. You, know, you have all these calls to do certain things, but um, yeah, I think it makes. I think that makes sense. Okay, so let's, let's dig into what you can do. All right. So this is just a little demo app that I'll use for exploring. Oh, that's the main storyboard. So you see the separation here. Uh, I wish I could make this bigger, but I can scroll this way. All right. So there's the separation that you'll see when you're developing. You've got your actual app. The only thing you can include is the storyboard and assets, or like images, or, or whatever media that you want to include with it, sounds, or, or whatever. That's the only thing that actually is in, in the app. The extension, then, is where all your code is. So then it's broken down by interface controller. And they're not view controllers. They're interface controllers this time. So slightly different term. And then you've got your actual app up here. So I was going to live in the storyboard for a little bit and kind of go over uh, the different things. So on every storyboard, actually, this one doesn't have the other one. Here, let's fix that. OK. Essentially, you have, you have three different entry points, right? You've got your notification, that's what this is. You've got your actual app, and you've got your glance, and that's what, that's, that's what this is. So when this gets fired up, one of those three things is going to get loaded. And I want to talk about um, layout and how you actually use it. Good news is there is no frames. There is no auto layout. There is no like annoying. Um, quirks with how iOS does layout. The way that they did layout was is vastly better and, and, and simple. Think of it kind of like I think of it kind of like um, divs a little bit with, with HTML. But so everything is about groups. So you, you drag a group up and then you can think of it like a div. You can organize things within that, that group and and you can hide and show them. That's basically the, the concept. So you can then <coughs> add a label inside that group. You can't just add a label. Actually, it does create its own group. But you, add, you add something to the group, and then you can add another group. And then let's say if I hide that one, the other one jumps up. Is yeah. there any restriction on the types of interface elements you can add to that group, or is it So it's anything down here. Essentially, images, buttons, you've got, uh, zoom in there. So you have table, which I'll get to later, or after, just after this. Image, separator, buttons, switches, there's a picker. Um, there's a special one for, for date and, and timer. So because it's a watch, you should be able to see the time whenever you look at it. It's kind of the concept. So these are special labels, essentially, that will always show you the current time and always show uh, you a timer that you then configure. This is kind of the idea. You can have a map, a movie, and then um, there's this uh, contextual menu, which I'll also get to. So layout is basically that. So I'll show you a little bit. So if I add another label, then you use you know, the right side here to then select your alignment. Um, then each group, you can then Select its size relative to the to the container. 
um, other attributes. Is it smart about overlapping? So if you have like a long label on the left and a long label on the right, what happens? It would essentially concat the label. So if you if you have um, instances where you have wrapping, you have to then um, design with at labels can have multiple lines, um, but you're if you're doing stuff like that, then it, it, you probably shouldn't be having stuff on a watch. I think is kind of the um, the stance. So so in here, uh, you also mention there are two different screen sizes. So you can design for the 42 millimeter and 38 millimeter separately. So you can say, okay, on the right side, I know if I'm on the 38, this label, we probably want it to be on the next line. So then you can um, adjust which, which where, where it shows up based on the screen size. Um, so you just have your standard things like color and but we'll talk more about design and how you should really think about things towards the end if we have time, hopefully. Any questions? No? Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about moving from 1.0 to 2.0, um, which is good that if you <laughs> have a 1.0 app, the 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 migration to 2.0 can be a bit painful, but I still think there are instances where you'll want to develop an app that is 1.0, because basically this it, this asterisk right here is huge, <laughs> because there are some things there's they they brought a lot of the API over from iOS to Watch OS, but not everything. And that little bit uh, in that asterisk quite possibly could be in, in a framework you're using. If you're using that framework, that framework won't compile and that you, you can use on the watch. Um, I'm running into this now. So basically makes you think, OK, so if I'm, re if I'm relying on this old framework to do something on my, on my iOS app, and there's no way either I'll have to re-architect this framework, or maybe if you don't have the source to it, then there's y there's no way you have to then still use 1.0. Like like a uh, good example is, so I'm using this framework called RESTKit, <coughs> and RESTKit then re relies on an older version of uh, CF networking or not not CF networking. Uh, the AF networking, yeah. So they, they rely on an older version of, of AF networking. Well, that older version then needs to be updated to uh, support all this, the, the same networking APIs to run on the watch. So you can still have a watch kit or a watch app with 1.0 and have all the iOS specific restrictions of um, the API, API you're using. <coughs> But when you're moving to 2.0 is when things can get painful because not everything's included. It's it's there's a subset there's a subset they they port it over a lot, but not everything. So the other thing is is data sharing, since with 1.0, your extension and your app live on the same device. Um, there's data uh, sharing that you could do through what they call app groups. Um, essentially, you could have a, a shared data uh, uh, file or a folder uh, that lives on, on your phone that both the extension and the, the app and other apps have access to and can share data. Well, that was completely deprecated with the extension moving to the watch. So they have this other framework called uh, phone connectivity, I think is what it's called. Essentially, you can send data to, the, to your um, your your app on your phone and vice versa and it's kind of like a asynchronous sort of almost not really a client server because maybe you just want maybe your your watch um, does all the data uh, syncing in the background <coughs> and it just wants to 
give that data to the to your main app to allow it to pick it up next time it runs. So, th so you can do this um, kind of client server sort of approach to it. Basically, if you're going to develop do 2.0, um, and if you're relying on a lot of code that can't be ported over, uh, do 1.0, essentially. All right. <coughs> so, I'll go quickly to another quick demo on navigation. When you're thinking about designing your app, there are essentially three concepts. There's hierarchical page base, which is all like what the glances were. Those were all page base. And then basically Apple says if you design your app to be one or the other and try not to overlap, because then the user can really get confused if, if you go into one thing that's page based and then it goes into hierarchy and then it get, gets really confusing. But uh, I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. So there's a, this is a, an app that, demo app that Apple has that has all, essentially all the UI elements. So this is a table, essentially. Um, and then you can drill down. This is the hierarchy, you know, pretty much makes sense. So the other thing I was going to show is the menu. So you have this force touch, the, the pressing into the screen. Will, on some apps, uh, will present this context menu that you can that you can show. So these are the different groups. Okay. Not horribly interesting, I guess. Okay. So, tables, I think, um, if you're familiar with uh, the UI tables in iOS, the way that they did tables in this is vastly different. So I just wanted to do a really quick code demo, maybe. We'll see how this works, live coding, to show you how simple it is. OK. So the first thing you're going to do, I'll delete these, is uh, you're going to use the storyboard and drag in what you need. So this is going to create the table and also automatically create this table row controller. So these are kind of special. And the way that they did this is a lot better. So, so basically, we're just going to create rows of whatever text that will just display. And it's, it's really simple to do that. So I need some verbs, I guess. Sure. Um, so that's our data. And then we are going to use this to then give us a reference. I'm hitting control and allows you to just drag over and create what's called an outlet in iOS or in WatchKit. Same difference. So that's a that's our reference. And then 
So basically, uh, you can have just a generic object that then represents each um, row. So we'll call it, uh, we're going to create a new class called uh, extends and this object. Then we're going to go back over the storyboard. So that's what this guy is right up there, the table row controller. You give it a name and you then specify which class represents that row. So we can just add our row controller over to that. And then in there, th then you can design everything that's going to be in this, this row. Um, we'll have just a label. And then since that row is then connected to this con row controller down there, I can just drag an outlet to it. Give it a name, and then we go back over to the controller, and then I'm going to put this on awake with context. So this is kind of like the in initialization of your interface controller. So we are going to do, so essentially we're going to grab the table and then set row Let's see if I could do this from memory but I can't remember That's why there's quick help over here. Is that row type? That's what I thought. No. Is this going to be a failure? Probably. set number of rows with type. That's what it is. So we'll just do data dot count and then with type of row. And then we can then go for Then you then ask the table, okay, give me a give me that row. Row at that index ex. And then we can do row dot. Used 
declaration. I think we're going to have to put this in the will activate. was risky I knew it <laughs> all right we'll move on but essentially it's, it's bottom line it's really simple to set up tables um, in comparison to what it was with with iOS you don't have any callbacks you don't have any um, delegates. delegates that you have to deal with and you can just wire up the um, the data the controller is a lot easier Yeah, yeah. So it would do view reuse, um, do those all that stuff behind the scenes. Another thing I should mention: you cannot add things to your view controller through code. Everything has to be done in the storyboard. So you can't just say new label, add it to the context. There's there's no views. That's why they're calling it an interface controller. Um, so, which makes things a little bit complicated because let's say you've got this really complicated UI. Everything has to be added to it and essentially hidden if you need it or not. So I read into this because we have a lot, of, with, with the, the travel app, we have, we have lots of different types of interfaces. So essentially I had to make this big, huge view and then just hide things as I need it. Which, which is kind of a downside because everything gets loaded in memory and then, then hidden. So. so you wouldn't load this interface with the little main interface? You have to do all that in one Yeah. Yeah. Because you only get one interface per app, right? No. You, you, get, you, get, you get multiple. So you can have, you can have um, like a hierarchy would then just create a new interface, push it onto it. Um, in the in in the page base, you essentially just give it an array of interfaces, and it, you can page through them. Cool. All righty. Okay. So uh, let's talk about WatchKit two, and all the things that you can add to it that they added to it. Clock Kit with the complications. Um, that's what I touched on. You can actually now have digital the 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 crown, I guess it's not on. The the thing you can uh, scroll. <laughs> You've got an input selector, which wasn't really there before. You can actually um, create the taps that that the user feels. You can uh, essentially create uh, a row of, uh, of data of, of that represents the taps and. Video and audio, or video playback, audio recording. I guess that'd be audio playback also, since it's got a speaker. So the watch connectivity, that's that communication between your iPhone app and your watch app. You actually have access to core graphics and animation, um, heart rate data, uh, gyroscope and accelerometer. So basically, you can, you can create almost anything now. Um, that, that you can think of that would fall in line with all the hardware that's on there. OK. I'm not going to do this demo because that was just way too much. <laughs> so complications, touch on this briefly. You've got these different sections. And those are the different types. So you've got five different types. And on the different watch faces, you can then design the, the certain things or the, the certain UI that you want to show up. Um, one really cool thing with this is this feature called time travel, which is kind of a dumb name. But when you're looking, you know, it's best to just show it real quick. So when you start scrolling, it will then adjust the time. Basically, you can kind of see that. It says plus 25 there. So that's plus 25 minutes from now. All of the, all these complications that are lit up will then display 
um, relevant data. So the weather data is essentially showing you, okay, in an hour, and two and three, that's what the temperature is going to be. So it's really great because, like, if you have a calendar, you can go through and s and see what's ahead. You can also go back in time. And I was just before this, I was, I was playing with creating one of these to to kind of show as a demo, but we don't have time for that. Okay. Okay, so let's let's talk more about design. So we we know all the things you can and can't do with with the the watch app, with the with the watch now. So so basically, if you have an app already, you think of it as a subset of what your app can already do. Would it make sense for this to be on your wrist? Because by and large, you not want to create an app that basically has nothing except the watch app, because I, I guess there could be some, some scenarios that it might make sense, but you're never going to really create just a watch app. I'd highly recommend living with a watch before you even start developing because there's lots of things that you would not consider or you would thought that was, okay, this would be a really good idea if I can do this on my watch beforehand. But once you actually start using it and understanding what makes sense and what doesn't, then you really kind of, because when, when we started developing it, I didn't even start thinking about it. I had some ideas like, okay, this makes sense, but it was very vague. And if I had started the, our, our app before I started, or I started using it, then yeah, it would have been not great. What features does your app have on the watch? Yeah, I'll get to, Yes, I'm going to do a demo okay. after this. So <coughs> essentially, the, the brevity of the experience, you're only going to be using it for seconds at a time, and also helps you understand and focus on what data a person would actually want at that time. So these are kind of summed up in these four bullets of design considerations. Less is more. Um, the personal communication of, of it, where, where it makes sense if you've got uh, a communication app. Holistic design where you're thinking about your, your phone app that makes sense with, with the watch and, and vice versa and the, the lightweight interaction. Okay, so Dash, we'll get to Dash. So first, probably makes sense to demo dash on the phone. Quick overview. So dash, if you didn't know, was birthed here at CRI four years ago now, I think, something like that. And um, I took it over uh, when, I, when I started working in travel transport about uh, just over a year ago. Basically, Dash. Is a traveler companion app. So, travel and transport. You, if you don't know, uh, does corporate travel for Gallup or Union Pacific or you know name whatever company. So, when their employees need to travel, they arrange all the 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 travel. Um, considerations with hotel and bookings and all this other stuff and it's it makes sense to big companies because then they can know okay what what travelers or which my employees are traveling how can we save money I mean may making sure that they're booking tickets that they should and not and, and so on so basically if you're a traveler you can download the app and then log in and use it and it is uh, your you've got your itineraries um, you got push notifications for um, cancellations and delays, your car rental information, there's some weather information. <coughs> you can get all your gate information and you know everything you'd need. We added stuff with uh, wait times, um, booking alternate flights. So there's something you can add. So if you're if you have a flight, you say like, okay, can I get home earlier? 
You can then see what your options are. And then one of the big features is this big green, or this button up in the upper right. So every person that is a traveler can press that and gets routed to their personal call center. So they can actually make the changes and, and so on. So thinking about all this and what can be used and makes sense in, in, in a app, a watch app. OK, so basically with the glance, the glance is going to show you your next upcoming travel event. So it'll load. So one thing on, I'll, I'll mention, too, with glances is when they first load, it will show us the snapshot of the last time you, you viewed it. So when you're looking at it, the data can get stale. And you have to do a load, and that takes way too long, I think. But so essentially, it shows you you got to fly two days away, which gate, seat, and so on. So you can click on that, and it'll launch you into the app. The app will load. This is 1.0, so they are sometimes this slow. <laughs> so it's it's going to load. And essentially, each it's just a paginated view of all of your flight or your trip trip segments. Eventually, right? Of course, this is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll go to the one that you were selected on. Right. It's another thing. You can't force quit apps on the watch. Once they're running or if they're in a bad state, you have to make sure that they're going to run. Which apparently I didn't do here. Maybe it'll work on my other watch. You do this all day long and it doesn't work and it works. You get in front of people and it's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, load it on my on my personal watch. So this is the flight. So one thing you'll notice when you when I'm swiping here, it's actually loading those interface controllers and doing that data communication as I'm swiping through. So there's, you can't just sit there and preload all that data. It's got to, it has to do that communication, which is why data ca caching is, is you know, paramount. So essentially, you've got all your segments. So it went, it went to the, the most upcoming one, which is a flight two days away. You can then force tap, force click and then get a list of all your trips go through them see an upcoming one and then basically they wanted a way to be able to call your agent but with 1.0 there was no telephone integration 2.0 that we're going to be adding it and basically just gives you the phone number um, if you have no uh, like a trip notification it'll show up in red but that's basically it. If I go back to there, my current trip. So I guess that's about it. I think I went over enough. Any other questions? Can you get your boarding pass on there? Yes, you can get if you if you have passbook. You can, but our apps don't have any integration with the airline bookings or like pass ticketing systems. So 
uh, if you have it in Passbook, it'll, you'll you'll see it in, in the Passbook. But our app, they keep on asking that, but we, we keep on trying. <laughs> is it hard to integrate, or is it impossible? It's impossible. Oh, really? Yeah. They don't give you that data? Yeah, it's like... like basically, the only way you get the data is by almost stealing it, by scraping a website or something like that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't, because it's not publicly... So yeah, you'd have to n have privileged access to Delta's APIs to be able to create a boarding pass. And we've asked them, and they said, thanks for asking, but no. <laughs> so. <laughs> so any other questions? Yeah. So what's the adoption rate on watchOS 2? You know what, I have no idea. That's a good question. Is that something you need to you know, take into consideration when making it <sighs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah, everyone can update, and... I mean, it's pretty much... I mean, iOS <laughs> updates are pretty much forced on you. No. no. Yes. <laughs> it depends on what, you know, how far back you want to support. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. I, I just, yeah, they're, they're more, more pushy about the updates, I, at least... At least yeah, then you'll see, like, a pop no, uh, you know, notification saying, you have an update with your watch, and I updated it with the beta, so I didn't know with what... Probably, it's probably, like, It's pretty high, I, I bet. When every single watch out there can update, and they really want yeah. people to push to it. Do you think it's too is it too early to start developing like little apps still? Because there's enough there to. No, yeah, I think there is. I mean, it's obviously not big yet, but you know, is there enough? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you have the, the speed alone buys you a lot. Like you saw, it it's got to load that 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 storyboard and everything else and then talk to the watch and every every single label that you're setting in the extension that communication goes back and forth and says it, it takes up time and then you also have your data load so if your data takes a while to load in the background um, etc. Is it Wi-Fi connected or Bluetooth or both? Both. Both? both? Okay. Yeah. So it's always in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? Yeah. You don't have to worry about that, it's just there? Right? Yeah. With Android, it was, it was Bluetooth first. Now it's a little bit of half and half. And now it's some just Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 Yeah.